together as you can, you big, a, a great big Skelmersdale welcome to Mr. Eddie Collington! Yeah! Just move this out of the way so you can see me. <laughs> 80 quid for shoes and I can't see them. Uh, hey gentlemen, I've had murder with her tonight. I'm sat in our house seat and she's doing me tea in the back kitchen. Next to me is hey, you. That's the other name by the way. <laughs> That's what you want, she said, what you come here. I said, what for? No dancing. <laughs> I said, what do you want? She said, come here, I want you. I said, I'm not coming unless you tell me what you want. She said, I want you to time this egg. I said, hey, honestly, God, it's frightening, isn't it? I mean, marriage, I mean, Christ, what are we talking about here? You might as well find somebody you don't like and buy them a house. Come on, you. It's the same Christmas. Christ, I bought her all sorts. I must have gone through about six quid. <laughs> I said, what the f what do you want for Christmas? She said, a widow's pension. I said, hey, come on. I've got a few bob. You name me, you can have it. She said, I wouldn't mind a ring. So I went out and phoned her. <laughs> no, no, I said, God, stop messing. What would you really like? She said, I'd love a new swimming costume. I said, there's nothing wrong with the one you've got. She said, there is. There's a bleeding big hole in the knee. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. Do you know what I bought her? It's a bit embarrassing because I know most of you. Do you know what I bought her Christmas? How could I inscribe it? It was like, um, it was like a black see-through negligee. Christ, see-through. You can drink the Liverpool echo through this. <laughs> It had like all fear around the bottom, keep her neck warm in the winter. <laughs> I bought it, Birkenhead Market, cheap, £2.50 in the middle of July. Well, I couldn't wait for Christmas, could I? I says, get your kit off. Get that on and give us a shout when you're ready. I went up them bleeding stairs nine at a time. <laughs> hey, lads, see through, she's lying back on the bed. She's lying back on the bed with his negligee on. Because you could see everything on his <laughs> navy blue cardigan, tracksuit bottom. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Marriage is all right, isn't it? But Christ, the hours are long, aren't they? Right? <laughs> if she could find a way of divorcing me without making me happy, she would. <laughs> no, see, the kids have kept us together. Neither of us want custody of them. <laughs> <laughs> For six kids, we hung one as an example. <laughs> the rest behave themselves. I thought I'd tell you a bit about myself. I've got a brother in Liverpool University. He's not clever, like he's in a little bottle in the laboratory, you know. <laughs> Mike drinks pints of lager and fights a lot. <laughs> but he's bloody good in bed. <laughs> well, until I get in with her like that. <laughs> Making lunch with the night, she said to me, you know the way you are in bed, like, you know, have just caught me toe on the... <laughs> I was making love to her, you know, she said to me, you're taking your time, aren't you? I said, I can't think of anybody. <laughs> every time... Every time she goes on holiday, she gets pregnant, so next year I'm going with her. <laughs> All right, love. I won't, honestly, go. I won't, honestly. Oh, the mother, 
the only thing I've got against the mother-in-law, Christ, she isn't half fat. <laughs> and we're talking bloody fat here, I tell you. 23 and a half stone, gets her knickers on a prescription. <laughs> Doesn't matter where she sits down in our house, she's next to you. <laughs> we made a pierce of ears so the kids can watch the telly. <laughs> Honestly, God, that's frightening. She's frightening a police horse. Honestly. See, ladies and gentlemen, being a comedian is not the same as being a singer. Because being a comedian, like, can cure happiness. Because you go to a Pavarotti concert, you don't get some fella at the back shouting, get off your fat get me made it. Yeah. But this mother-in-law of mine, Jesus, tonight, you've never seen, you've never seen a pair of hips like it in your life. Well, apart from mine, like. I had it out in the park last week, the elastic went in the knickers, broke three trees down. <laughs> I mean, and everyone has got the right to be ugly, haven't you? Now, see... She... She abuses the privilege. When she puts a lipstick on, it backs into the tube. <laughs> Keeping Tom knocked on the door the other day and asked her to shut the curtains. <laughs> Give himself up, he's now a Trappist monk. <laughs> and then in the supermarket last week, bent over the fridge, fish fingers went for the throat. <laughs> oh, it's not all. Oh, I'm not kidding you. Took her to see that film, The Elephant Man, come outside, she's signing bleeding autographs. <laughs> To give you an idea, ladies and gentlemen, how ugly this woman is. She was confronted in her boudoir, which is a for bedroom. She stood there, ladies and genitals, ready for bed in a Wrangler nighty, zip up to the neck, balaclava and scarf, ready for bed. And in walked three burglars. Well, you've never heard a scream like it in your life. Have you ever heard three burglars scream? <laughs> and she's joining in like, you know, <laughs> burglars, shit. Hey, uh, you don't rape as well, do you, lads? <laughs> he said, well, we usually do, but tonight we'll just rob a few things, you know. <laughs> Take it everywhere with her, because it's better than kissing a goodbye. Not long gathered in Blackpool on our summer holidays last week in January. We stand a better chance of getting a debt here. <laughs> Got her on the beach, Christ, in a, in a, in a bikini. Eight piece. <laughs> Lads flocking round her just to sit in the shade, you know. <laughs> Greenpeace tried to refloat her three times. Right? get the summer outfits from this bloody catalogue one suing oh come on can you imagine it 23 and a half stone gold lame boob tube oh you may titter dark brown jumbo cords her ass looked like a ploughed field she loves blackwell get some money back on the ghost train honestly See, my mate, he recommended Blackpool. He said, Eddie, get up to Blackpool, it's marvellous. It's, it's very good for asthma. Said, you know what? I was only there two days and I got it. <laughs> <laughs> and when she saw the tram car, she was made up. Because I'm not kidding you, we got shut about in Liverpool years ago, as you well know. And she's chatting the driver up. She said, Are these the same tram cars you used to have in Liverpool? He said, I don't know. She said, Well, if I put my foot on this line, will I get a shot? He said, You will be cocky, you'll have one over that wire up there. <laughs> I suppose it's one way of looking at it. <coughs> I'm not going to talk about it anymore. It depresses me. Got no bloody price. It is a problem when you're overweight. Don't pull the beards anymore. <laughs> oh, I squashed a few of me time. <laughs> oh, flatten some grass, me. <laughs> Don't let it kid you, girls. You need a big hammer to knock a big nail in.
People pass through marks, you just laugh it off, don't you? And women of the worst come up and poke you. Say, so daft things like, you're a big lad, that, and you eat a lot. Because I've not got a bleeding tube here, blow myself up in the morning, you daft cow. <laughs> Don't halfway you're up and down, women don't. I'm in the post office the other day, you know, Digmore. <laughs> you might see me that I was catching my gyro, you know. And, <laughs> and this woman's like waving me up and down, like never really waving you up and down like that. She's me, you're one big fella, you aren't you? I said, well, yeah, you know. <laughs> she said, can I ask you a personal question? I said, you can't be one like that. She said, you big fellas like you, you're in proportion. I said, Christ, no, I said, I should be about 45 stone. <laughs> it's a lies as well. <laughs> My next jump's off the liver buildings, I tell you. Oh, God, I. I've had a word with our doctor over the way, though. Christ, he's friendly, gets on the couch with him. <laughs> I've been to the doctors lately, he doesn't have got a bloody headache now, I said, take your clothes off. I said, where should I put him? He said, on top of mine, over there. I said, there. He's got to take me out twice, I'm not easy. He said, what's the problem? I said, it's the weight, isn't it? He said, what weight are you? It's about 12 and a half stone, roughly. There seems to be some doubt. Well, give or take a hundred weight. You cut your head at council. Christ, the mate's have seen his father. <laughs> Where'd you get the gear, rags out us? That's has gone home now. Yeah. Oh, I... No, I mean, honestly, God, I tell you. Talk now, talk to like, what a character, eh? He says to me, have you any problems? I says, my love life is shattered. He says, when did you first discover this? I said, twice last night and first thing this morning. <laughs> he said, you got any other problems? As a matter of fact, I have. So I'm having trouble with my bow hells. <laughs> he said, are you constipated? I said, no. He said, you got the shit runs? I said, no. As a matter of fact, I'm very regular. I pass seven every morning. What's the problem? I said, I don't wake up till ten o'clock. <laughs> some sleeping tablets for the wife. He said, what for? So she's woke up. <laughs> and the way doctors get the kicks, right out the blue, leans over the desk, he said, uh, do you ever talk to your wife when you're making love? I said, well, uh, yeah, there's a phone handy, like. <laughs> Fancy saying that to me, that. Fancy saying that to me, do you ever talk to your wife when you're making love? I can't bleed and breathe properly, let alone talk to it. <laughs> Your bloody tongue's on the line though, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> That's just getting me socks off. <laughs> talk to me. I said, what do you want me to say? <laughs> she said, you love me. I said, of course I bloody love you. What do you do? Press ups? <laughs> <laughs> She's 26, don't know. <laughs> Oh, you've no idea what I've got to go through. <coughs> I've not rephrased that. I know why I'm fat. I like lager and chips and pies and that. She blames the pill. <laughs> I said, have you seen your hips lately? She said, it's the pill. <laughs> Does that mean you take it 15 a day? <laughs> now, Jack, I know it's a bloody lie because you've been on the coil for you. What a bloody nuisance them coils are. Half past two the other morning, we were picking up Radio Luxembourg, police messages. <laughs> Every time she crosses her legs, the garage doors are flying up and down. And... <laughs> Woke up the other night, bedroom full of steam, the goblin tea's made her come on to her clock. <laughs> Played bloody havoc with the Christmas tree lights. That was in Liverpool City Centre, that one. <laughs> 
on the CB radio one. I shot you in there, good buddy. <laughs> it's a big 10 4, a big 10 4. I thought, where the bloody hell's that coming from? Break a break, I said, I'm doing my best. I thought I was getting nagged at from both ends. I had one end going, I've got a headache, and then the mum was, come on in, rubber duck. Come on in, rubber duck. Now, Jack, it's a delight. It's a delight to be working Skelmers there once again. But, ladies and gentlemen, on a serious note, fun. No, ladies and gentlemen, you've got to laugh at adversity. If you've got a problem, if you've got a problem, laugh at it. You get through life much better. Because I've got a mate in this business. You might have seen him here, he's a cheap act. <laughs> he's only got one leg, he's a tap dancer. You must have seen him, he finishes with that song, Knee Up Mother Brown. Sing. I've got another mate, he's been blind from birth, does parachute jumping for charity. I said, hi Charlie, how do you know when you get near the ground? He said, the dog's lead goes slack. <laughs> <laughs> Siamese twins on their holidays in France and I'll tell you something now before we go any further I am not happy with the Channel Tunnel imagine the speed the French are going to come down there when the Germans have made them again then. <laughs> Siamese twins on their holidays in France walked into a French restaurant as you would in France <laughs> the fellow said, Polyvrou Francais, monsieur? He said, what did he say, Charlie? He said, I don't know, give him a smack in the mouth and be on the safe side. <laughs> you put your guard up and I'll hit him. <laughs> he said, would you like a table for two, sir? He said, it's got to be a table for two, you daft get with Siamese twins. <laughs> Joined the dip. He's like some French cuisine. He said, what the, f what's that? He said, escargot, snails, frogs, let... Oh, I said, what, none of that crap. I'll have bacon and egg, you'll have fish and chips. He's like some French wine? He said, no, it's like vinegar. <coughs> he said, excuse me, if you don't... He was, he was a Liverpool lad, emigrated. <laughs> he said, excuse me, he said, if you don't understand the language, you don't like the food, you don't like the wine, what the bleeding heads you come to France for? He said, it's the only chance Charlie gets to drive. <laughs> It's very nice. It's very nice to see the ladies out in George. I could never get her out. My missus never goes out. Last time we were out together, it was when the gas oven blew up. She is soap opera man. I've never known a woman watch so much soap opera in all my life. If it wasn't for Emmerdale Farms, she'd have no fresh air. 116 hours of Australian soap to watch it. Did you know that? She kicks off with the Sullivan, sons and daughters, country practice, young doctors, home and away, neighbours, flying off the cell blockades, chances, families, Shortlands, they're crashing on, but ever can you? Yeah. I haven't even mentioned El Dorado and that's finished. I used to love that El Dorado. God, it made me feel talented. <laughs> young doctors are my favourites, what brilliant surgeons. I was watching it one afternoon, did an operation on Paul Robinson for piles, half past five, he's riding a horse in neighbours. <laughs> <laughs> and the adverts, he must take me come up the river on a bike. Have you seen the girl that comes on? She says, I had to have a baby before I found the right shampoo. <laughs> what sort of a chemist shop, then? <laughs> I can imagine the girl's going in, shampoo, please, certainly, madam, step this way, bum, cough for that. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, as you well know, I'm not a blue comic, but what I saw in the chemist shop the other day, I was totally stunned. In fact, I stood back in amazement, and there was a fellow next to me stood further back because he was amazed how far I stood back. <laughs> I noticed on the wall, condoms fitted while you wait. I said, oh, come on, Christ, what an embarrassment. And a beautiful girl behind the counter. I said, excuse me, I was dead embarrassed because I got done. Ow. I got shot in the back. <laughs> I said, are you the young lady that fits these condoms? She said, I am. I said, well, wash your hands and give us a quarter of a cough drop, she said. <laughs> I said, I'll have one of them 
condoms. He said, they're about that big. I said, don't want it fitting, they're about that big. He said, that'll fit a mouse. I said, it is for the mouse. Our house is overrun with them. <laughs> Should we try filling the holes with the polyfillers so they can't catch the buggers? <laughs> and then bloody adverse the rot egg. <laughs> the puppy with the 300 yards of toilet roll. <laughs> Don't see the bloody fella running behind him with his pants around his ankles, do you? <laughs> and you know what? Dogs ate fat fellas. <laughs> as soon as a dog sees me in the street, <laughs> He must look at me as I get all of his bloody leg last me six months. <laughs> Take me a week to bury the bones. <laughs> I bloody hate them, especially them Rottweilers. <laughs> I come out of our house the other day, this bloody Rottweiler come bounding towards me, he's got a stick in his mouth, I thought, shit, it's armed. <laughs> no, you panic. <laughs> Lovely Rottweiler up the road, though, I think he's crossed with Lassie. But he ripped this fella's arm off and went for help. <laughs> yeah. But the worst experience I've ever had in my life of a dog was when I was courting a lovely lady from the Wirral. As you well know, the Wirral is a pretty classy place. <laughs> Salvation Army, I've got a string section. <laughs> this girl was absolute knockout. Her legs had been together longer than her shadows. <laughs> Would have took Moses to part these knees. And she shut me up there, because she said, Oh, Eddie, I'm only asking here, lads. She said, Oh, Eddie, I've arranged for you to meet Mummy and Daddy and have Sunday lunch after the hunt. I said, What hunt? I said, I can't go on a bloody hunt, you must have a fit. Christ knows what the horse will think. I said, I'm just learning to eat with a knife and fork. That's what these plasters are doing on my head. Well, I went to her house, it was everything you've dreamed of. Thatched roof, roses round the door, a croaky lawn, swimming pool, tennis court, dry ski run. Just threw that in. <laughs> they don't have little dogs garden houses like that. You should have seen this great, a great day. What a dog, them great day. Row, 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 row. Get off your back. Get off your big back. Pin to the wall, get off. And this voice from the back kitchen, so refined. Kick its balls. <laughs> I went, wham! She went, no, no, the one's on the law. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, her mum and dad don't like me anymore. <laughs> and the bloody dog wasn't too happy either, I might say. <laughs> but, ladies and I've got to go shortly because we've got another great act coming on, as you well know. But, um, but before I go, it's nice to see such a gathering to such a crazy game. Last time I saw a gathering like this one, I mean, was the VE Day parties, weren't they? That's the spirit we've got here tonight, I hope. Because the VE Day, because the kids didn't understand the VE Day, did they? My granddaughter didn't. She comes to me and says, Granddad, who was Churchill? I said, the last white fellas would be called Winston. <laughs> Granddad, he'd have nothing to do with that bloody VE Day stuff, because he still hates the Germans, him. Oh, he bombed his allotment. Oh, I shelled all his peas. <laughs> hey, guys, I've got to shove off. But before I go, if anybody's drinking Guinness, Guinness is a marvellous cure for a cough. Six pints of draft Guinness, you are terrified to cough. <laughs> Oh, Christ, it's worse than a vindaloo. If <laughs> you have the vindaloo, what did he put in them vindaloos? I don't know what it is, but he could take over this country on a Sunday morning. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you put a toilet roll in the fridge if you have one. <laughs> oh, the rots are coming out and they are going in. It's no wonder Gandhi wore a nappy, in it. <laughs> I knew a fella being on the Guinness three days and nights, went into Timson's shoe shop Monday morning. He said, can I have a pair of um, shoes, please? The girl said, um, oh. He said, uh, bloody hell, lad. Christ, what have you been eating, mice? 
No, stay where you are. Don't follow me. Stay where you are. Which size do you want? Is your last size, um, seven and a half? She so you want to get that seen to. She said, you can't be well. I said, you want... Oh, Christ. Do you want black or brown? He said, love them. Oh, God, I've got to pay. Could you hurry up? Said, you dirty son. You are locking up. There's got to be better ways of earning a living than this. Do you want lace-ups or slip-on? He said, love them. Enough. Should you try them on? In the street, if you don't mind. You should have the great then. Nice shade. Very comfortable. How much are they? You should have frightened the tenant because you shit yourself. Ladies and gentlemen. God bless. Listen. As you all know, as we all know what it's a great cause this is, you know it's for. And all of us have sometime in our lives been touched by that dreadful disease. So later on when we do, you know, the raffle and one big things and other, do give generously and we'll have a super night. We've got a super act coming on for uh, and um, as you know, like I live in Skelmersdale now, I'm delighted to be here. Uh, we're not twinned with anybody in France or anything, but we've got a suicide pact with Wigan. <laughs> Have a super night. See you on the telly tomorrow on, on Celebrity Squares. I'm on tomorrow. <laughs> and between me and you, I'm on top of Linda Lusardi, which has been a lifetime ambition. <laughs> Have a super night. See you all again. Bye bye now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, keep it going, keep it going. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Eddie Corrington, come back, Eddie. Take a bow. Absolutely fantastic. Right. Value for money or what? Yeah. Whoa. Thank you, Mr. Eddie Corrington. Okay, we're going to.